Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to look up the last non-blank value in a row in Microsoft Excel. So in my previous video, I showed you how to use a formula to look up the last non-blank value in a column. If you haven't watched that video yet, the link is available in the description box. In this video, I'm going to do the exact same thing, but the difference is I'm going to do it with data, which is in a row. So I'm going to use the exact same data set as my last video, but the data is in a row orientation this time. So I want to get the last non-blank value in this particular row, which is now located in row number five of this sheet over here. So the formula I create should return the last name here, which in this case is Rachel. So to do this, we need to use two formulas. The first formula is a mash formula, and the second formula is an offset formula. And using these form two formulas together, we're gonna to be able to achieve this. And we're gonna be able to get the last non-blank value in this row. So first I'll explain how each of these formulas work, and then I'll combine them together to get the final formula needed to achieve this. So the first uh, formula is the MASH formula, and the formula is currently displayed on the screen, and here's how this formula works. This formula will give us the reference of the last non-blank column within this row, which contains a value, obviously. So if I input this formula in this cell over here, it's gonna uh, give us the number six. And the reason we're getting the number six is the last non-blank value in row five is column F, which is the sixth column in this data set. So this is correctly returning the number six. And how this works is, it's looking up the last column in row five. That's why I've referenced row five over here, which is not null. And that's why we're correctly getting uh, six, which is the sixth column. Now the second uh, formula we need to use is an offset formula. And what the offset formula does is the offset formula takes the result of the mesh formula and it turns the value based on the other inputs which we feed into the formula. So the reference I've inputted here is A5, which is the first cell within this row. The row count is zero and the column count is six, which is coming from the mesh formula. So as you can see, these two formulas together returned the correct value. That is the last non-blank value in this row, row five, that is in this case. Now let's input uh, another name uh, in this row, uh, just to test it out, make sure it is indeed returning the last non-blank value in this row. So I'm gonna go ahead and column H in row five, I'm gonna enter a new name. Let's say I enter Dave in this particular cell in row five. As you can see, the match formula has now returned eight, which is the eight column. Column H is the column number eight in this sheet. The offset formula has correctly returned Dave, which is the last non-blank value in this row. Now let's combine these two formulas together. So this way, every time you do it, you don't have to enter two of formulas. You can just input one. Uh, so here's how it goes. So I will put the offset formula here. And in the offset formula, instead of uh, referencing uh, cell B8, which is a cell that uh, we put the match formula in, I'll just copy the match formula and put it directly there as a reference. So I'll just open two parentheses here. And inside the two parentheses, I'll just put the formula, which is, I just copied. I'll just do a control V. And there you go, you have your date. This larger offset formula is a combination of these two formulas above. Obviously, I wanted to first explain how each part works. So uh, to simplify it, I explained it one by one, but you can just go ahead and use this final formula, which is also displayed on the screen right now, uh, to get the last non-blank value in a row. And uh, please do have in mind that the arguments within the offset formula, uh, especially the first two arguments, may need to be revised depending on where your data is starting. So in this case, it, our data set is starting at, in column A, that is the first column. That's why uh, I put A5 as the first argument. And I put at the end, I put B8 minus one. Uh, so you might need to change these values. For example, 
let's say that our data set starts at column B. And for demonstration purposes, I'm going to add an extra column here. So I'll insert a new column over, right over here. As you can see, these numbers are no longer working. The offset formula is not working because we are referencing uh, cell B5 and uh, in the last argument, uh, that is the columns, we have C8, that is the match formula of minus one. Since we have an empty column, which is not being factored here, in this case, the last the argument should have a minus two as opposed to a minus one. And there you go. Once I put minus two, the correct value, the last non-blank value in this row has been taken into account. And that's what you have to do when uh, your data set does not begin in the first column. So if your data set begins in exactly the first column, then you can use the original formula. You just need to put minus one at the end. But if it uh, doesn't start at the first column, say it starts at the second column, you have to put minus two. So have in mind that you have to manually modify the formula in situations in which your data is not starting from the first column as so. As you can see right now, the correct value has been returned by this formula, which is the last non-blank value in this particular row. I hope you found this video useful. If yes, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure to subscribe and also turn on notifications so you won't miss out on my future videos. See you soon.